afternoon, everybody. I'm Michael Fox, and this is I Preach. I haven't had a video for the last couple of weeks because I've been under the weather. I'm feeling a lot better now. The last time we were talking about loving yourself, and we were in Matthew chapter 22, and the Pharisees asked him a question. And in verse 36, they, they asked Jesus, they said, Master, what is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the law and the prophets. And I, I said let the, the last time we were together that if you don't love yourself, you can't love your neighbor. Jesus said to love your neighbor as yourself. So if you can't love yourself, how can you love your neighbor? And if you can't love your neighbor, how can you love God? So I gave you a definition of what of what uh, of what love is and we're going to go over that again and it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 through 8 and it says in verse 4 love endures long and is patient and kind love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy is not boastful or vainglorious and does not display itself haughtily. This is from the Amplified Version, by the way. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own ways. For it is not self-seeking, it is not touchy, or fretful, or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it, and pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes and is ever ready to believe the best of every person. It hopes, its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. And then in verse 8 it says, love never fails. So when I'm able to love myself, and this is the, this is, what we, we look at when we, we say we love ourselves, we, we need to be able to endure long with ourselves and be patient with ourselves and kind to ourselves. And all these things that we've learned, what, that we see in this definition, we need to apply to ourselves. Sometimes we get very frustrated with ourselves because we say we know better or or I should have I should have realized that but we need to display love to ourself first and then we'll be able to display love to other people <clears throat> so when I'm able to love myself now I can take that love and use it to benefit others and I said that the kingdom of God is a giving kingdom. Love is something given. It's not something that you receive or you grab. It's something that you give. Because the kingdom is a kingdom of giving. And love is, is, is the key to that kingdom. So let's look at this commandment the commandment in the Old Testament is found in Leviticus 
19, verse 18. So we're going to go back and look at it really quickly to show you that it's actually in the Old Testament. <laughs> and it says in Leviticus 19, verse 18, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So it says in this verse not to harbor resentment against your neighbor and not to let not to let any um, negative thoughts linger in your mind toward one another. But God said that he's the avenger. You let him take care of it. You're supposed to show love. You're supposed to, to, to love one another. We're supposed to love one another. And this was on Jesus' mind before his death. If you would turn with me to John 13, 34. It says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. It states here that we are to love one another as Jesus loved us. And how did Jesus love us? He died on the cross for us. So that's the kind of love we're supposed to show one another. A love that would even give up their, their, their life for another person. Since Jesus is inside of us, we should be displaying Jesus in our lives. I, I would like you to turn to 1 John now. And I want to show you something. I was looking in 1 John, and we're going to turn to chapter, chapter 4. And I'm going to read verses 20 and 21 and it says in verse 20 if a man say I love God and hates his brother he is a liar that word hate means to the de to detest especially to persecute and by extension to love less so John is saying that if a man says he loves God and hates his brother or detests his brother or despises his brother that he's, he's a liar. For he that loves his brother whom he has seen how can he love God whom he has not seen? And since God is in that person how can you not love that person and say that you love God because your, your, your brother you see your, your Christian brother your Christian sister you see God you don't see and John was saying how can you say that you love God whom you don't see, but you don't love your brother, who you see. And a lot of times, you see this in a, in, in a lot of churches, that people will, will um, have problems with other brothers and with other sisters. And they'll, they'll, they'll have arguments and fights. There's, there's, there's people who won't talk to other brothers and sisters in Christ for like 20 years because of something that happened a long time ago that they may not even remember what happened they just remember that they hate this guy but if you hate your brother and, and you say you love God the Bible says you're a liar well how do you love your brother 
there's a lot of things you can do. One of the things you, you need to do is, 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 is to pray and ask God to help you with that. Verse 21 says, And this commandment have we from him, that he who loves God loves his brother also. That's a commandment. And the word commandment means an authoritative prescription. It's, it's, it's a, an authoritative prescription. When you get a prescription for medication, you get that medication, you take it so you can feel better. This is the prescription to live in the kingdom. This commandment we have from him, that he who loves God loves his brother also. So Jesus called this a commandment. And if you look at John, 1 John 3.23, he talks about this commandment again. If you look through 1 John, it's all about love and it's all about the commandment to love God and love one another, the whole book. And if you took a half an hour, 40 minutes, you'd be able to read through it. It's only five chapters long. But in, in chapter 3, verse 23, he says, this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandments. So God gave this commandment too. It came from God. Jesus gave it as commandment and John is reminding us of the, this, this commandment. And the, the, this, is, this is the commandments of the kingdom. It's a law. But it's so much more than, than, than just the law. Love is what we become. And it's, what, and it's who our Father is. And we're not talking about the love of the world because the love of the world is selfish. The love of the world, we see a lot of people that say they love one another, that this man loves this wife and they get married and then after 20 years they fall out of love. But in 1 Corinthians 13, 8, it says love never fails. So if you really did love them, you'd still be loving them 20, 30 years from now. We're in our 33rd year, me and my wife. We've just, just passed our anniversary on the 4th. And I love her more now than I did the day I married her. And that's the way it should be. It should be a growing love, not something that grows less over time. And then all of a sudden... You don't love her, she don't love him, he don't love her, let's get divorced. We fell out of love, but love never fails. The love of God never fails. And it sickens me to realize that even in the church, the divorce rate is over 50%. That should not be. If there's anyone that should be married and not get divorced, it should be Christians. We should be setting the example. Now that I get off my soapbox, let me go back to what I was talking about. <laughs> First John 4, starting in verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. So love comes from God. This love on the earth that they call love is not love. It's something else. It's not love, because love comes from God. And everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. So if you are living that life of love, not only do you love, but you, 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 you know God. That's how you know God. You don't know God by saying a prayer or by reading the Bible. I read the Bible for 30 years, and I didn't know God if He would have walked past me on the street. It's when you begin to love the way Jesus loved, love the way God loves. You become love. You don't just receive it. You become it. <clears throat> verse 8. 
Verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. If you don't know love, you don't know God, because God is love. And a lot of people don't know God, so they don't really know what real true love is. And this was manifested the love of God toward us. Okay, we're going to see how the how God manifested His love to us. Because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Verse 10. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a creation for our sin. That word appropriation, it means atonement. But listen to what He says. God loved us when we didn't love Him. That's true love. When we hated Him, when we blasphemed Him, when we've sinned, when we've done all those things, He still loves us. He still sent His Son for us. And that's the true, the true test of love. If you can love a person even when they abuse you, even when they mistreat you, even when they, when they despise you and you can still love them, that's the true test that you're being changed into the love of God if you could still love them after all that. Could you imagine what Jesus said, what he said to Peter if he would have acted the way we act? And Peter just denied him three times. And here's the resurrected Jesus saying, Oh no, Peter. No, 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 not you. You didn't deny me once. You didn't deny me twice. You denied me three times. And not only did you deny me three times, the third time you were cursing, you called him cursing down on yourself. You, you, you don't get this. You, I don't want you here. That, that's what we would have did. But what did Jesus do? He forgave him. Not once, not twice, but he forgave him three times. And you can read that in the, in, at the end of uh, the book of uh, Luke. It talks about when, when um, Jesus was resurrected, they caught the fish. And they brought the fish. They found out that it was Jesus and Jesus already had the had fish laid out and bread and he went to Peter and he said do you love me more than these and 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 Peter said yes Lord I do love you and then he asked him again then he asked him again it was like he forgave him three times for those three times that he denied him So, the love of this world is selfish, and it's, it's more like you need them, but God's love is, He don't need you, but He loves you anyway. Our, the, the world's view of love is, I need you, and you need me. God's love is, I don't need you, but I love you anyway. <laughs> so, and I never really understood love until I heard God tell me. I was talking to you about this last week, uh, uh, two weeks ago. Talking about being, I felt like I was just being tolerated. And I wasn't really loved. And, and I heard God tell me, I don't just tolerate you. I love you. God don't tolerate you. He loves you. Someone needs to hear that. 
God doesn't tolerate you. He loves you. Love doesn't want or need. And like I said, that was the love of the world. But that's not the love of the kingdom. The love of the world is selfishness, but the love of the kingdom is selfless. So when we begin to love ourselves, we'll be able to love our brothers and our sisters as the Lord gave us commandment. And next week we're going to be talking about loving God. Well, not next week because next week I'll be preaching, I'll be teaching in, um, in Lords Valley Community Church next week. If you want to come, services start at 10 o'clock. And the address is, is, is on, on, on the screen right now. If you have a chance to come, I'd really appreciate it. We're going to be doing, uh, continuing our study in James. And then the week after, we're going to be talking about loving God. So, God bless you. Have a great week. And I'll see you next week on iPreach.